We have breaking news right now. China is announcing new tariff rates to apply, and as a result, this market has completely reversed course. Here is the news. Beijing will raise the import tariff rate on some goods. It will apply to about $75 billion worth of goods, and in a nanosecond, this market has reversed course. Dow Industrial is now down 91 points. Joining me right now on this breaking news is the Office of Trade and Manufacturing Policy Director, Peter Navarro. And Peter, it is good to see you. Tom is everything, isn't it, my friend? <laughs> you, can, you can't make this up. Maria, I can't really. believe. So here you are sitting no. here, and we this are This was about... not planned, by the way. I'm sorry? <laughs> this was not planned, by no, the way. No, no, but, but the Beijing yeah. is out, and it is saying what it is going to do. $75 billion in goods. You knew a retaliatory move was coming. Is this worse than you expected? So, uh, look, uh, we know China's going to do what it's going to do. Here's the thing, what's really interesting. In the two and a half years that the president's been in office, he has absolutely galvanized the American people and Capitol Hill behind his China policy. And we know why. China steals our stuff. They flood our communities with fentanyl and everything in between. I think uh, the, the risk here for China when it does things like this is simply to galvanize support even more for the president. So, look, we're going to have negotiations. Are you saying that getting a trade deal with China is not important? I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that, that uh, we've, we've gone through this negotiation now dating back to Mar-a-Lago uh, in spring of 2017, and we've gone through five different decision nodes where every time we've, we've negotiated with them, we tried to move the football, they have backed away and we have taken measures. Through all of that time, We've had a very strong economy. We've had a very strong uh, stock market because the market looks at the data and understands that even though this relationship is very important to get right, yes. the actual uh, amount of money that's being tariffed is not material in terms of macro growth. Yeah. So what, what's you have been the hawk in this situation. You have been the guy saying China has been doing these seven sins: the you know the intellectual property theft, forced transfer of technology, the currency manipulation, currency manipulation, the fentanyl, the whole nine yards. Sure. I got that. My issue here is I have to get your take on what's going on on the breaking news because China has said right now this morning that it plans to raise import tariff rates on some U.S. goods. It's going to have new tariff rates that will apply to $75 billion worth of U.S. goods. The new tariff rates imposed on some U.S. goods will be ranging from 5% to 10%. So you got $75 billion worth of U.S. goods that are going to be taxed from 5 to 10%. This is likely going to impact people, and that is forcing some people to think the economy slows sure. down. What is the impact of these tariff increases on the consumer, Peter. Do you think this is going to be a catalyst to slow down this economy? A absolutely not. I mean, the, the beauty of the Trump tariffs is that it's, it's been pain on them, not pain on us. Uh, as we've applied tariffs to Chinese products, we've seen clearly, and you had Jerry Storch on explain how exactly this works, a uh, beautiful segment you did on that, but basically what the Chinese have been doing, slashing their prices, cutting the value of the Chinese yuan by 12 percent. And meanwhile, on this side of the Pacific, what, pe what people have been doing is looking for other suppliers, investing here in America, adjusting. And over time, what we're going to have uh, is a more resilient and diversified global supply chain, more investment here in America. And I just, I just think that the way China is reacting to this whole thing is simply reinforcing America's perception of China as a bad actor. I mean, if you think about it, we now know, here's, here's the beauty of this. You've been saying it so much. President's been saying it. Everybody's been saying it. We know that China steals massively from us. We know they're killing Americans with fentanyl. We know they manipulate their currency. So, so when Americans understand that, and then when China tries to bully us, that only strengthens our resolve. But in terms of macro impacts, in terms of pure macro impacts, it, it's, it's, it's not large. What's important over time, though, is if we get that China relation right, if we get them to behave like other actors in the world economy and stop stealing our stuff, 
that's the next leg of global growth. So that's what right. President Trump is fighting for. And his and leadership I, and I totally on get this that. has fact, been you, extraordinary. You have been, you have been among the most articulate in terms of explaining the national security risks that are coming from China. You and Secretary sure. Pompeo, by the way. But, but still, markets are reacting because they want to see some kind of a deal. Would the president consider a small deal, just doing something with trade and putting the big ticket items aside? I think I know so, the answer, but what does your gut say? So, so you know, you know, Maria, the last thing that I'm going to do right here talking with you is speculate. And the second to last thing I'm going to do is try to negotiate in public. This is the job of the best United States trade representative in history, Bob Lighthizer, working with our Treasury Secretary behind closed doors. But in terms of investors, look, if, if this step by China should have already been baked into the market, I mean, everybody knows kind of what, what the dance that China does. But the point here is there's only a small handful of people now in the White House that deal with the trade issue. It's Lighthizer, Mnuchin, Ross, Kudlow, and myself. And nothing gets out between us five. Yep. And so if so senior officials are saying something, the reporters are either making this stuff up okay. or they're trying to push the president or the policy in one way or the other. Well, so the journal, the by the way, the, is, journal, the journal says... Uh, uh, don't mention the Wall Street Journal. I've got to say this. <laughs> that they is the Wall out, Street Journal, not the Main Street they've Journal. They've been outspoken about your involvement in this. They, sure. in, in one op-ed, they called you President Trump's, quote, trade Rasputin. See, we are all China hawks now in this country, and and whether it's uh, Mike Pompeo or Chuck Schumer or a Harris, a Harvard Harris poll that says we're uh, the public is behind President Donald J. Trump standing up to China as the chosen one. I, I mean, look, um, for investors, here's what I'm saying: what's important over the next three to six months are things other than what happens with China, because that's a long-term thing.